everyone. So today I'm going to be reviewing Skip Beat Volumes 4 through 6. Yes, I am doing all three. It is in one book. So you're going to read it as one, right? I read this book on the plane, basically, on the way home from Florida in Volume 4. There are some questions being raised. Um, Kyoko has a rock she calls corn. And she was told as a child that pouring out your emotions into corn will make you feel better because corn will absorb them and you won't feel them anymore. And she thinks it was an uh, adult who took care of her, who gave her this rock. And Ren makes some things, makes some some comments, personal comments to himself about it. And you're like, I think, I think you've known Kayoko before. And you're just not telling. Here's Kayoko freaking out, by the way. I love this little picture, it's so cute. Oh my god, that's meltdown. Which Kayoko does a lot. And then in this book, Kayoko is told to basically go fill seats at a show. Be the live audience. Um, and then the show finds out that LME, um, their company, sent them and their little mascot guy is sick and they need somebody to, or quit or something like that, they need somebody to fill a position. And the main actor is Shofuya, who happens to be the guy that Kyoko wants to take revenge on, which she doesn't find out when Moko volunteers her to be the mascot. So here she is getting fitted. By the way, the mascot is a chicken. Aw oh, yeah, it's hilarious. A chicken named Bo. But she does a lot of stupid stuff when she finds out that show is going to be on the show. See? Show? What? Basically. And so she tries really hard to like make him look horrible and ends up just making him look even more amazing. And uh, yeah. But, and then she gets fired for it because of political reasons, basically. She ends up getting asked back because people were like, I loved Bo at the last show. Why is, you know, the Bo on the next episode was so boring. Bring back the old Bo. And so she ends up getting hired um, for the permanent mascot. Anyways. And that happens later on. Well, Ren, um, after she gets out of the show, and they basically tell her she's fired, don't ever come back, you're banned from this set for life kind of thing. Um, she's walking around, you know, talking to herself, and she runs into Ren, who is um, doing a scene, but she's still in her chicken costume, so he doesn't know it's her. Ren wants to see her phone. She doesn't have her phone with her. And he wants to look up a word that he doesn't understand, and she basically helps him work through it. Not only that, but he, you know, basically tells her it's okay to fail. We've all failed. And he tells her about his backstory about failing in America. I believe that's at this scene is about yeah he tells her that he um, couldn't make it in American film industry so he came, he moved back to Japan and he's like every girl's dream guy right now so you know he's like it's okay to fail just learn from your failures and move forward kind of thing don't let it hold you back so he's like yeah, it's not a big deal and at this time, this is where Kayoko begins to have respect for Ren. 
She tries really hard to keep it secret that she is Bo, by the way, because of that incident. She doesn't want him to hate her um, because she didn't disclose who she was in the beginning. So then in volume 5 is a commercial, um, both Moko and Kyoko end up auditioning for this soda drink commercial and Moko has an enemy since school age. Um, here she is. Her name is Erica. And Erica has basically made it her life mission to never allow Moko to act, have any positions. And uh, Erica is wealthy and her family is, you know, her, her father, her grandfather, her grandfather is really well known. And, all right, so sorry about that little interruption. My roommate had come back from doing whatever and uh, to take a siesta. So I had to stop. Um, it's been an hour now, so let's see if I can try and remember where I left off earlier. Sorry, I had some stuff out over here. Journal stuff, and it's in my elbow way. In the elbow way. Uh, anyways, we were discussing four, five, and six. I was talking about um, Moko and Kyoko trying to get hired for this commercial. Um, basically, they have to do a show on with a partner and they need to act like they're the very best of friends and then they get in a fight and then they make up. Like that's the whole idea behind the commercial. And Moko and Kyoko, Moko just hits it out of the park. Moko's a really good actress um, and Kyoko feels like she's kind of left behind and can't keep up and um, things like that. Uh, Kyoko does end up responding to Moko, um, and then it's Kyoko's turn to, like, apologize. Kyoko hates soda drinks. Like, for some reason, I guess they're different in Japan than they are here in America. Um, I, get, I, I don't know, um, just the way it's described in the book, is I get a feeling that it's, um, they're just two completely different drinks and we wouldn't know the difference until we've tried them. Let's just say this is the scene that Moko acts out, um, the whole fight scene, and it's so empowering. Well, not empowering, but so powerful. Like the emotions just, you're just like choked by how much emotion is just jumping off the page, just <laughs> the judges' faces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes Kyoko's turn to like make up. And Kyoko's like, a fudge. I, I don't want to do. And Erica catches wind of what Moko is planning on doing. As a result, Kyoko freaks out even more. She figures it out, they end up landing the job, and it's freaking fantabulous. They get really famous from it. Um, and in fact, they get so big that Moko and Kyoko end up getting hired eventually for another job later on. But in book six, Ren's manager ends up getting sick. And because Kyoko is part of the love me section and they have to do any job that's given to them, Kyoko gets hired to be Ren's stand-in manager. And you see the whole chivalry thing and the 
things like this. Like, she's his manager. He's the actor, basically. The manager's supposed to do everything, I guess, or supposed to look like that. And he's like, you're a girl. I can't let you do that stuff. Pfft, I'll cut my own stuff. And, you know, he gets, he says some things that really upset her. And she's like, just because you say so doesn't mean that that's going to happen. And she goes about proving him wrong. And I, I don't know what it is, but he's, she somehow encourages him to eat more. But people make fun of her because she's in the bright orange or bright pink uh, suit and people recognize him because he is famous and a heartthrob um, and you see some of the backstory that he sees her as on her I don't think she remembers Ren um, I think she was maybe too young for when they first originally interacted as children um, she ends up getting enrolled in the school. Um, the manager, not the manager, the owner of the LME group finds out she's never been to high school and was like, guess what? You're going to high school. And she's just like, what? I don't understand it. I mean, I enjoyed high school to a degree, but she was just like, she didn't want it because uh, in her commercial, she like was all upset about taking off the school uniform because they were playing schoolgirls, and she was you know saddened, and she you know would play with uh, when she hung it up, she you know would pet it fondly and things like that, and so she gets enrolled in high school, and as a result, she has to take entrance exams, um, and so being Ren's manager as well as prepping for school, you know, he gets sick. He never allows himself to um, break away from character until the cut um, has been called by the director. And, you know, she admires his dedication and we start seeing the whole admiration between the two he ends up having you know a super amount of respect for her and he gives her some really good advice he's like just chill um, she's you know freaking out about school and everything like that and getting top marks and everything and he's just like who are you trying to impress and you know she does flashbacks of her mother and then she realizes she's working for herself now and as long as she gets in, she's happy. That's all she wants us to get in. And ends up getting, like, top marks and accepted into school. She heals Ren. Like, she does all these things. She's like, here, eat this. Here, put this on your head. Here, do this. Here, do that. And so that he can continue to work. And, uh, oh, here's, here's an, a, a, a good piece. This is internal thoughts of Ren. And it says, my impression of her was of a girl who was overly romantic about everything, who often cried about things related to her mother, but Sho made her smile right away. She was four years younger than me, but she was very observing, determined, and impressed me how she did her best with everything. And so you have the scene where he's taking care of her, and he just... the It's kind of like where the... the I work with you, I think you're stupid, you're pathetic, your reasoning behind doing, you know, pursuing a field that I absolutely love is ridiculous, I have no respect for you. And all of a sudden a, a switch flips and he has respect for her and he ends up developing feelings. I and mean, you can see it in just these few pages. Um, I really do like it. And this is, this is, this is the scene. You know, just, just them. It's like a switch, like I said, just the switch flipped in just those two little shots there. And, and shortly after, you know, he's reading lines, he's trying to work on his lines and they're not sticking. And she knows his lines because she's heard them a hundred times. And... You know, she, she says the next line, and he carries on, and, you know, the 
two of them end up interacting together and you can s it's just like fireworks just sizzle just so much sizzle and you know he's upset because he's like she's only learned this because she wants her revenge and he's trying to like you know deter him from his feelings he's still in that denial process um she, she she doesn't exist as a girl to him. She exists as this petty little girl right now, so. And not a, a, an attractive woman he might want a future with. So, um, definitely some great character building in these three. Um, great character interaction, um, emotions, there's it's just it's a page flipper um, but like I said I finished this in a plane rides or in two plane uh, I had two um, I also had a couple hour layover I was reading this at so in the course of a day I read this entire book so um, I think I also read volume three as well as part of this uh, part of that chunk so I recommend this series definitely, but remember, it is jumpy and it's kind of difficult to keep up um, at times, so don't be afraid to slow down. Um, if this was a normal manga, I probably could have read this one and the next one, which is a 3 in 1, in the same day, but because I was slowed down dramatically, um, it did take me all day to pretty much read this one book. Well this three-in-one book. Um, but yeah, till next time guys. Bye.